Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And to all my brothers out here preaching this truth to you, I say Shalom. This is Amatazar from the Chicago camp, coming back at you again with another lesson entitled, I Will Also Forgive Thy Children. So when you look at this thumbnail, you see this cute little kid, all right? Um, and, and that's what uh, the problem, one, starts with the fact that uh, we think they're just cute little kids. But the reality is the Lord is not looking at the fact that they're children. The Lord is looking at spirits, okay? All right? So that's why in the Christian church, you have people that say, how could the Lord allow, you know, such death to come to children and all this old bullshit because they don't know the Lord? All right. Your cute little baby. All right. is still a spirit. All right. That's been on this earth before. And that spirit, if it's the Lord's will, is going to get judgment no matter whether it's three months, four months, five months, two years, three years. It don't matter how old the baby is. OK, that's a spirit wrapped up in that in that flesh. All right. That can be judged at any time. So. I'm going to play the short, but I want to get some scriptures first. But in this clip, in this uh, thumbnail, excuse me, you can see that uh, this little little boy is eating uh, shrimp and uh, bell pepper stuff with crab meat. It's all bullshit. But who's perpetuating it? Who's feeding him that? Okay, look at him. He's got on pajamas with mushrooms. He ain't got no money to go buy no shrimp, crab, and lobster. It's the woman. It's the woman, the woman, his mother. Okay, his mother, his auntie, his grandmama. These are the women, all right, destitute of the truth that are raising the next generation. That's teaching them wickedness at the young age. All right. We're, we're coming back into our knowledge. We're coming back into our power. And that's what these scriptures are for. And that's what these lessons are for. OK, so let's get into the lesson. All right. Because if you don't know by now. You ain't supposed to be eating that shit. All right. Here, here's here's the lesson for you. All right. So the title of this lesson, again, is I will also forgive thy children. Now watch this. It says the Lord, Yahweh, don't care about your kids. Hosea 4 and 6, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. All right. Now that's a promise. All right. The Lord says, you've forgotten my law. I will forget your children. All right. Women with no male oversight perpetuate wickedness and cause each new generation to err or go off or sin. Isaiah 3 and 12 says, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. All right. And so who's ruling over these children? It ain't no fathers because the fathers ain't in the house. All right. See, uh, see these. Uh, these so-called Eves have allowed Esau. All right. To give him a check. In order to keep the man out of the house. Now the woman tell you, I don't need a man. I'm independent. Okay. And that's independent of wisdom, independent of counsel, independent of male oversight. All right. There's no male oversight. That's, that's what the problem is. And really it goes into righteous male oversight. All right. Being with a man of understanding. So <clears throat> all throughout, you know, the nation, you have um, children 
grown well I, i'd say grown ass men that act like little boys being raised by their mother mothers aunties grandmas all right um what, what was his name um oh, i can't think of the guy's name sam samuels kevin samuels he was interviewing a woman once and she was talking about the men out here and how they're trash you know and he looked at her and he said who raised these men these men were raised by your mom and your grandmother you see there were no men in the house and so these unruly men that's wild and temperamental and emotional all right they never had any discipline all right are running these streets and wreaking habits in the community all right again isaiah 3 and 12 as for my people children are their oppressors and women rule over them O oh, my people they which lead thee which is this not head nappy head harlot cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths you see, a righteous man is the hedge. Without him, the woman is spoiled and keeps our nation in wickedness. And that's why Yahweh ain't dealing with women. This is Ezekiel 22 and 30. And I sought for a man among them that I should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. OK, the man is the hedge. Okay, a man in the, a man of understanding is the hedge. Okay, it says, and stand in the gap before me for the land. You see? Now, when a man is out of the house, okay, the scripture says, this is Sirach 36 and 24, where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. You see? What's the possession? The woman. The woman is a possession. He that findeth the wife beginneth the possession, like unto himself. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. You see, your your woman is your possession. All right? And if there's no man of the Lord around, you see, all you got to do is look in society and see how spoiled these women are. Uh, Elder Manatas Akbar just did a video the other day and he had these big, fat, booty women just, you know, with their ass hanging out, right? Their ass was hanging out in the thumbnail. No shame, okay? Uh, where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled, and he that have no wife will wander up and down mourning. Right. So that, that kind of goes both ways. You got these these women that are not wife material. All right. And you have the have men, you know, hey, they looking for a wife and can't find one. OK. Seek the old paths or way the patriarchy. See, feminism calls male oversight the patriarchy. But that's what you should be seeking. You should be seeking the leadership of a man of understanding. Okay? And that's what you have with the men of the Lord. So there's a uh, story about the sheep, the wolves, and the sheep dogs. Right? So you had the sheep being watched by the sheep dogs, and the wolves couldn't get near them. All right? But then the wolves, they snuck off to the side and they was talking to the sheep. They said, listen, we just want to be friends with you. We want to be friends with you. We want to have a great relationship with you. But you got these damn sheep dogs all in the way. Okay. And these sheep dogs are stopping us from having a relationship with you. All they doing is just trying to control you. These sheep dogs just trying to control you. So the sheep got together and they said, you know what? We always wanted to be friends with the wolves. Yeah, yeah. Let's tell the sheep dogs to, to mind their own business. 
So the sheep got together, told the sheep dogs, hey, look, we don't need your services no more. You, you guys are trying to control us. <laughs> we want to be friends with the wolves. The sheep dogs said, what? <laughs> you want to be friends with the wolves? They're going to eat you. But the sheep didn't believe it. So the sheep sent the the the, uh, the sheep dogs away. And guess what? The wolves had the best meal of their life. You see? The sheep dogs is your brothers and your fathers and your uncles and your grandfathers. That's who the sheep dogs are. These are the men in your life that are meant to protect you and to guide you. But you as a woman... Don't want that. You don't want that. You you look at that as being controlled. And feminism has taught you that. This is Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus said Yahweh, stand ye in the path, in the ways, Salaki, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. See, the Lord is saying, Go back to the old way. See, the old way, you had male oversight. Okay? That's that Numbers 30. Read Numbers 30. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore, hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Second Ezra's 2 and 1 says, Thus said the Lord, I brought this people out of bondage, and I gave them my commandments by men servants, the prophets, whom they would not hear, but despised my counsels. You see? All right? So we are holy people. All right. And we were given commandments. This is Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It says, for thou art a holy people unto Yahweh thy power. Yahweh thy power has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Yahweh did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because Yahweh loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that Yahweh thy power, he is the most high, the faithful power, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. All right. So, so the Lord gave us commandments. Let's look at it. Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even Yahweh my power, even as Yahweh my power commanded me that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath the Most High so nigh unto them, as Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that have these statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you, this day. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. Now, how often or how frequent are you supposed to teach? Okay? Teach this truth. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our power is one power, or one Yahweh. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, 
when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So that means all times, <laughs> all times, all the day long, you're supposed to be teaching your children what's right. All right. Psalm 78 and five, it says, for he established the testimony, 78 and five, for he established the testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born. Who shall arise and declare them to their children, that they may they might set their hope in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High, but keep their commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with the Most High. Okay, so this scripture is saying that hey, you're supposed to teach your children from a young age all day long in all things okay it says when you're lying on your bed when you're sitting up in the house when you're walking by the way when you're back in the bed you're always supposed to be talking about the lord and the things of the lord and what's right okay what's right and what's wrong his commandments all right and, and then you know you got this woman all right with her child okay he eating uh bell pepper stuff with crab meat and uh and shrimp okay all right so israel you got to stop eating shrimp and crabs and lobsters and crawfish and mussels and oysters and clams and calamari and alligator etc okay all right now let me go ahead and play this video and come and 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 then i'll get my last scripture in closing let me play this video. see that that's what he said i want to show y'all how bell pepper supposed to be and she just laughing and egging it on all right in closing this is leviticus 11 and 9 it says these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters in the seas and in the rivers them shall ye eat and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing that is in the waters they shall be an abomination unto you they shall be even an abomination unto you you shall not eat of their flesh but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination whatsoever have no fins nor scales in the waters that shall be an abomination unto you Okay, I pray that this lesson has been edifying until the next one. Shalom.